So for this last problem, um, so in previously we've talked about ways to add them, right? And then we looked at ways of subtracting, ways that multiplying, ways that dividing, right? So when I'm doing a problem like this, again, the first thing I want to do is let's find a rule for addition or subtraction. So to get from 2 to negative 11, I have to subtract, uh, or I'm sorry, to get from 2 to negative 9, I have to subtract 11, right? Mm -hmm. So I can write a rule as y equals my whatever my x number, in this case would be 2, minus 11. That gives me 9, right? That works for that one. What is it? Okay, that works. However, does that work for this number if 7 was x? 7 minus 11, is that negative 24? So therefore, this rule does not work. Nor will adding or subtracting work. So now we let's look to multiplication. Um, and I can't multiply. There's no integer I can multiply 7 by to give me negative 24. There's no integer. Integers are like you know 1, 2, 3, 4. There's no integer I can multiply 2 by to give me 9. Nor integer I can multiply negative 5 by to give me 12. So what I'm going to look to, rather than trying to figure out a decimal or something, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to see what about a combination of the two. All right? So when working on combinations, um, what you want to do is you're just going to have to kind of set up, get close as you can, get as close as you can, and then just kind of see which one works for the rest of them. So let's remain focused again on this middle one, because I like this one. So what can I multiply 2 by to get me kind of close to a negative 9? 3, 4. Okay, well, 3 would give me a positive 6, but I want to get close to it, so I'd want to multiply by what kind of 3? Negative 3. Okay, let's multiply by negative 3. So I can have y equals a negative 3 times x. What else could you multiply negative 2 by? Yes? Negative 4. Negative 4. And how about we do a negative 5 too, right? Now, there's unlimited options for you to multiply your x by, right? Mm -hmm. But let's just try to keep it simple and see if any of these work, okay? Work for the rest of them. So if I multiply 2 times a negative 3, that will give me a negative 6. To go from a negative 6 to a negative 9, I have to subtract, subtract 3. Let's say I do negative 4. Negative 4 times 2 is a negative 8. To go from negative 8 to a negative 9, I have to subtract 1. And to go from a negative 5 to a, uh, a negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And I'd have to add 1 to give me to negative 9, right? Okay, so what I just did, ladies and gentlemen, is I just created three relationships that work for this term. These are all, these all are true for this value, right? But remember, when you're writing a rule, Dakota, you really want to pay attention to this. When you're writing a rule, you don't want to write a rule for one value. Your value has to be true for all of them, okay? All of them. So we did it just for this middle one because you've got to get started. You've got to start somewhere, right? You just can't imagine, like, say, poof, here it comes. Get started somewhere. Find a rule for one of them and then see, does it work for the rest of them? So um, let's go start down here. Let's do negative 2 times negative 5. That works. How about we do this one? 7 times negative 5 is a negative 35. Plus 1 would be a negative 34, which is not that, right? So this rule does not work. Let's try this one. 7 times negative 4 is a negative 28. Minus 1 would be a negative 29. So therefore, this rule doesn't work. Now let's try this one. 7 times negative 3 is a negative 21. Minus 3 is a negative 24. Seems like it works, right? Let's just check the third value just to make sure. Negative 3 times negative 5 is a negative 15. No. Negative 5 times negative 3 is a positive 15. Minus 3 would be 12. So guess what? It works. So therefore, that is your rule. Right? Ta-da!